So the deploy kick send state will also stop the robot by sending the zero zero con control action to it. And then it'll enter this logical statement where it checks if the kick send is already deployed, then it will uh, transition to uh, the previous mode if the previous mode was stopped or it'll transition into the done state. So the done state is just basically a state that it goes to after it's finished with the current state and then it'll just um, continue on to the next instruction in the set of instructions. Uh, so the reason for this right here if it's if the previous mode was stop, then it transitions to the stop state. That's because if you double press the stop button, which runs the stop function in this robot controller twice, then it also deploys the kickstand. But you don't want to, you know, go on to the next instruction after you double press the stop button. So this just makes sure that if you double press the stop button, it stays in the stop state after it's done. And then, uh, but if it's just executing instructions like normal, then it'll just continue on to the next state. Um, so, yeah, and then if the kick send is not deployed and the kick send is not currently deploying, but it's in the deploy kick send state, then it's going to tell the robot to run the deploy kick send function and that will actually tell it to activate to actuate its kick send downwards and then this retract kick send is basically the opposite uh, it'll also send zero to the control action so it, it's not moving or it doesn't want to move or anything while it's in that state and then if it's uh, already retracted then it'll either uh, go back it'll basically try to resume the previous state or it'll go back into the done position um, so and yeah uh, so these two uh, branches are just to compensate for if you tell it to go into the drive state it automatically goes to the retract kick sense state if it needs to. So like it can't drive if its kick sends are deployed, so it'll automatically retract. And this is just to make sure it goes back into the correct state after it's done with that. And same thing here, it goes back into the turn state if you tell it to turn and its kick centers are deployed and it automatically retracts them. So after that happens, uh, it goes to the done state just like in here the deploy kicks in um, and that goes on to the next instruction uh, so yeah and just like before if it's not currently retracting and it's in that state uh, then it retracts and yeah this break statement just exits out of this case so this doesn't run if it's in this so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. So the next state it goes into, or the next state that exists, is the override state, and that is going to just check has it been in the state for ten seconds, uh, without, um, without anyone pressing anything, and then if no one has pressed any override action for 10 seconds then it's going to transition back to the previous mode so um, if you if it's like going on a tour and you press override button and it goes you know to jog the motors forward a little bit then it'll just sit there for 10 seconds and if you don't press it then it'll go back and resume its previous behavior so um, after 10 seconds uh, and then this robot action equals override action that's just say if you press the forward button 
then it writes the override action variable and then it's just telling it it completes that transition of s taking that variable and sending it to the robot and uh, yeah so the next state we're going to go over is the turn state so this is the first state where we really kind of go into any uh, sort of control loop uh, or I guess it's you know it's a discrete control system so uh, this is just a proportional controller um, it stores the uh, current the starting angle for that state and then it calculates the target angle uh, based on the uh, distance parameter that was included in the step that is executing and um, so once it knows its start location and where it wants to be then it can uh, it can run or it can it can compute that distance um, between the two and then based on that distance it applies a control value or a, a control action of a different magnitude so if it's very far angular distance uh, between the current and desired angle then it's going to um, go really fast but if it's really close to the target value then it's going to slow down a bit so hopefully it doesn't overshoot and um, so this is just a single step of that control action and then 16 times per second as this is running as long as it stays in this turn state then it's going to continue to do that and then finally we have this down here um, if the desired uh, angle is within half a degree of the current angle then it's going to uh, stop turning and then it's going to transition into the done state and go on to the next instruction uh, so that's how it leaves this state and then there's this reverse state which tells it to drive backwards uh, using a similar proportional controller uh, the drive state is just the forward version of the reverse state so I'll, I'll kind of go into how that works um, you store your current x and y in angle and then you compute uh, given assuming you want to go forward or backwards in the reverse state by that amount um, you have a proportional controller running uh, so actually no you calculate your destination uh, given your current angle and the distance you want to travel you calculate what are the destination xy coordinates and then from there you uh, calculate how you calculate your Euclidean distance to that xy coordinate and then you apply the desired control action so uh, this is actually not very optimal as so like if it was if for some reason something bumped it and it was going the wrong direction then it would just keep going forward faster and faster in the wrong direction so this was actually uh, the first version and then after we came up with that we uh, fixed it and we invented this drive to state so the drive to state actually uh, it takes in a target x and y position in the global coordinate space and then from there it calculates the the required heading to get to that xy coordinate and then it has a more complicated control structure so uh, if the heading is to get to that that desired xy coordinate is greater than 20 degrees off from the current heading then it will turn towards that desired xy target and uh, when it's within 20 degrees then it stops turning and starts driving towards that target and uh, 
as it's driving it will still correct angle a little bit but not as much um, because it's if it's driving then it's within 20 degrees of this set point uh, so um, yeah so I'm, I'm gonna kind of co go over how that works uh, we calculate the angular error um, and also when it's turning we make sure the distance is greater than six inches so if it overshoots by a little bit then the angle is going to be off uh, it doesn't need to like turn around to fix its six inch deviation uh, so we just kind of let it go if it's really close to the destination um, so or actually this one is it's five degrees uh, right now it was 20 before but we changed it so um, yeah if it's within five degrees then it'll rotate it'll apply a rotation action to get to the right heading and face that desired xy coordinate and then if it's within five degrees of the right uh, of facing the right direction then it will actually apply this um, and also if it's greater than six inches away it'll apply the distance uh, proportional controller and yeah uh, so this is just if there's an obstacle in this state then it will stop moving completely and it won't do anything until the obstacles removed or goes away or you press override or something and it leaves the state um, but as long as there's an obstacle it has this gain of three it applies uh, it's a proportional controller so it multiplies the gain um, oh actually no never mind uh, so so there's two gains and if it's driving forward you have a rotational gain of three which so it still corrects for a slight angle if it like if it gets off a, a little bit as it's driving then it will uh, it'll turn a little bit um, so it has this gain of three but um, I know it'll apply that um, then the translation action it has a gain of one over 36 inches this is all inches so uh, basically it'll start through it'll start slowing down at three feet away from the target destination uh, proportionally to that distance and then this clip function just assures that nothing's going out of uh, out of the allowed action amount so you can't send like a value of negative 100 because the controller only goes to negative one so in the double two robot so once you have those two action the two proportional actions calculated uh, you, you send that to the robot by setting that variable as we described before and then uh, turn to is basically the same as the drive to state except it doesn't move uh, forward or anything or backwards it just turns to the desired angle um, so yeah drive to it'll turn to the desired xy coordinate and drive there uh, turn to will just make sure the system is in the desired global angle and then this done state is kind of what I've talked about a bunch of times throughout this uh, as it's going through this uh, when it gets to the done state it has a set of instructions that it's trying to to um, get through so say it'll do turn to and then deploy kickstand and then retract kickstand and uh, maybe turn to again and then drive to somewhere else so every time it finishes one of those instructions it'll transition into this done state uh, 
and in the done state it waits for a certain amount of time in this case half a second uh, we just did that to make sure it stops completely before going to the next state or whatever in at the beginning because that was important but with the turn to and drive to it's not as important but um, yeah so it'll do that and then uh, it'll check if it's finished the very last instruction then it'll go to the stop state and uh, otherwise it'll just go on to the next step in the list of instructions and uh, so this list of instructions here is called step so there's a step index which is incrementing every time it gets to the done state and um, each step it has uh, these these three things it has the mode of the step so that's like drive to turn to whatever and then it has the first distance and the second distance so uh, so for example in the drive to mode where you want to go to a certain XY coordinate in global space uh, this mode right here will be one of these control moves modes it'll be drive to and then the x coordinate will be distance and then the y coordinate will be distance to uh, the second distance value and uh, those are in inches in the global coordinate space um, so you have those two um, or yeah you have those two uh, variables and then you have this mode value which is going to tell you in the uh, dispatch switch statement which case to execute so um, yeah and then uh, so if you actually want to execute a list of instructions there's this execute function which is run on the plan from the view controller uh, when you press start so uh, this execute function it takes a list of steps and then it sets the the internal list of the robot controller to that list of steps that was passed in it sets the current step index to zero, and then it uh, just it starts execution of the first step. And as each step finishes, it'll go into the done state, unless it's like a stop step, for example. Then it'll just kind of sit there until you press resume or something. Um, yeah, so that's how the execution of a set or a group of these uh, steps works uh, a step is just an instruction say turn to this angle or drive to this xy coordinate or deploy the kickstands or whatever so um and yeah like i said if if you're in the stop step uh say you manually press the stop button uh you can press start again and it'll run this resume function and what the resume function does is it'll grab the mode it was in before the stop function and it will uh, jump the robot back into that mode um, so yeah there's uh, yeah there's potential for some conflict it doesn't check if it's in the stop function so if you first if you somehow call the resume function while you're in say uh, a, a turn to state and you just retracted kick or if and you just finished retracting kickstands um, there's a chance that from the turn to state when you press resume it'll just jump back to the retract kickstand state and then it'll uh, get into the done state and then it'll just skip that instruction entirely 
So uh, you have to be careful about when this resume function is called or else it will just, uh, it can cause problems. So um, yeah, and then there's the stop function, which just sets the current mode to stop and then it clears out the driving and turning and whatnot. And then um, if you double press the stop or if you call the stop function twice, that's where it actually sets it into the deploy kick send mode. Um, so see if the previous mode is stop and you run the stop function, then it'll transition into the deploy kick send mode. And um, if it's in the deploy kick send mode and you call it, it'll just, uh, this basically, um, okay, yeah. When it's finished deploying, it'll transition back into the stop mode and then it knows that if the double stop triggered that, then it needs to run those instructions. So that's that. And then finally, there's this, this convenience function for transitioning modes. So the transition function is what you would normally want to do to transition into a new state. It just stores the previous mode as the current mode uh, sets the mode to the new mode and then um, it sets the start time of that new mode uh, to the current time because you're just transitioning now and then so it basically sets up the previous mode and the start time to the correct value so you don't have to do that yourself every time uh, you go to a new mode it's just a convenience function and yeah, that's the entire robot controller and the robot object that it controls. So uh, 